Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Philly Thoughts of Videocast. And today I'm joined by Noah. Uh, he came on uh, in early July last time, and we welcome him back to the video cast. Uh, Noah, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Of course. Um, now, today we're going to be discussing a variety of things. Um, first, we're going to talk about the Phillies' playoff chances, about how we think they could possibly sneak in this wild card spot. They currently sit three and a half out. We're also going to be discussing Bryce Harper's first season in Philadelphia. We will also be discussing things like managers, Gabe Kapler's you know, future in Philadelphia and some other things. So let's just jump right into it. Now, uh, the Phillies, obviously, is, as I said, uh, set three and a half out of wild card, second wild card spot. The Cubs, who lost Javier Baez until October, they they are ahead of us. And uh, the Brewers, who just lost Christian Yelich, uh, their star outfielder, are still ahead of us, which I think that, you know, I definitely don't think that the Brewers will continue to stay there, especially after the loss of Christian Yelich. Um, the Mets, who were 11 games under 500, are still ahead of us, and it's just crazy to think that that we. It just shows how mediocre we've been this year that we let a team like that come all the way back against us. Uh, I think it should be. I think it's an embarrassment for this team that you know that that has happened this year. So overall, I think I, I don't know if we really deserve to make the playoffs. I, I don't think we have played well enough to be in the playoffs. Um, but I mean, you know, there's still technically a chance. We have Boston today, and then we go out to Atlanta for three, Cleveland for three, and then we got to go to Washington, D.C. for five, which is going to be really, really tough. And we got to go back home and play Miami. So it's a, it's, good to, it's a tough schedule, and um, the Phillies could still technically pull this off if, you know, if they really, you know, you know, really pulled through it. But it, I think it's unlikely. Um, so I don't think the Phillies are going to make the playoffs. Well, last time I talked to Noah, he said that he thinks the Phillies still have a chance. So, Noah, what do you think? Um, well, the last time I talked to you on the podcast, I thought that we were going to beat the Braves for the division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they could, uh, yeah. Now I think we have a shot at the wild card. We're only three and a half back. The Cubs lost their, like, second best player, mm-hmm. Javi Baez. Mm-hmm. Um, the Mets aren't that good. Pete Alonso is overrated. Yes, I agree. Christian Yelich broke his kneecap. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Like, it's totally possible. Yeah, I, it's, it is possible. It is possible. But I, I still don't think it's going to happen. But I do agree with you that they still have a shot. I mean, if they wanted to do it, they could. But yeah. I just, they've just been so mediocre this year. Uh, like, it's just they've been playing 500 baseball. Their management isn't been good enough. Their coaching staff isn't good enough. Uh, the moves that were made, the pitching isn't strong enough. It's just, it's just a lot of things is wrong for this team. Uh, they just, they just don't really have much fight. You know, it's kind of frustrating to watch. Um, obviously, I know, you know, Kapler's still there, but I don't know if he'll be there, you know, come next year, which I hope not. But I'm just this point in the season, where we are, I'm ready for 2020 to be here, and you know. I can't wait until opening day next year because I think next year is going to be our year. We have you know, Harper the second year and every, everything else. So I think you know, we'll talk about that later at the towards the end of the video. But I think next year's our year. But uh, this year we just got to finish out this year and see what happens. But I think next year is going to be the year in Philly. Um, Don't give up yet. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, we're I only three and a half back. Yeah, but they just the schedule so tough and 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 like I, as as I said before. The Braves, when we go there, if they're three, they already clinched the playoff spot. And maybe they're not going to, they're probably not going to play some of their starters. Like they usually, like Freddie Freeman, they're probably going to play Ronald Acuna Jr. until he gets 40 40, which is really impressive. He's having a great season. So they're not going to be playing all, I mean, they could technically do it. Um, and there's a shot. I mean, it could happen. I mean, a miracle could happen. It's almost like, as you said before, the 07, the 07, uh, the 07 team that we, you know, pulled back. We've only got two weeks left and we have a lot of work to. A lot of ground to cover, and hopefully we could do that. Um, so do you agree? Yeah, like maybe in the five Washington games, maybe they don't pitch Strasburg and maybe they don't pitch Scherzer. Hopefully. Like Strasburg's had Tommy John like twice. Yeah. Like they could totally sit him for totally. a start. They totally. could sit Scherzer because he's like 30-something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, could, I agree. They could sit Rendon. Like, Soto, yeah. Yeah. I don't think they'll sit Soto too young. I don't know. They may not want to risk an injury. You never know. But um, 
I mean, it's anything's possible. You know, that's that's the thing. Anything's possible with this, you know, with this whole wild card thing. It's crazy. That's what it's called wild card because you never know it's going to happen. So the Phillies uh-huh. are still in the thick of it. Now, moving on from that, I want to talk about the man that we brought in this past offseason for 10 years, strange at $30 million, Bryce Harper. Um, he's, you know, having a pretty good season. Not, you know, not like outstanding, not like not like a career year, uh, but he has broken a couple career high. He, he had career, career high in RBIs, and the season isn't over yet. He has 102, uh, 31 home runs, uh, which is his third most of his career. He averages about 32 home runs a season. And for a player that's getting paid $25 million a year, I think that's that's pretty good. Uh, or yeah, twenty five million dollars. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, you know, the average isn't great. He has a ninety five walks. He's on track for over a hundred walks. He already has a hundred RBIs. He already has thirty home runs. He his on base percentage is good. The doubles are there as well. So I think he's having a very solid season. Not to mention defensively, Noah was going to talk a little bit about this after I finish this. He's had a fantastic season defensively. He's had a career year in the outfield. Last year was a disaster. It's probably his career worst, and he goes from having a career worst to career high in infielding. And he was questioned as a liability last year. I remember that. I mean, he was a defensive liability out there in center field. And this year he's been completely different. So I think for the Phillies, I think they have really, really won on this Harper signing, especially with the defense and everything else. So now I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you? Th- I think Harper's had a really nice season, especially defensively. So what do you think about Harper's season? I just like to see him hit for a higher average, though. That's all I'm going to say. So the average is a little low. I would like for him to bring that up to, like, 270, but – it's no big deal. No one mm-hmm. pitches to him. Mm-hmm. Um, he has 10 intentional walks. I thought that would be higher, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he's driven in 102 runs. That's a lot for, like, we still have half a month left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he could get to, like, 100 and, like, he could if he wanted to. He could get to 120 if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. If he could, like, I mean, if he could, like, go on, like, a, like a, like a run. Make it to like thirty six home runs. I mean, like the twenty fifteen. It's anything's yeah. possible. He's gonna have the most strikeouts in his career, but that's fine. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. He's got a ton of doubles. Yeah, he does. I mean, the doubles have been very, very good. And um, if you want to talk about the uh, defense, because I know you wanted to mention something about that. Yep. So early in his career, he was a. Decent defender. He would make great plays every once in a while, but he wasn't, like, special. Mm -hmm. He was, like, above average. Uh Now he has – now the league lead is tied for Hunter Renfro Renfro and uh, uh, Garcia from Chicago Mm -hmm. in the AL with Mm -hmm. 13. Uh Um, Harper has 12 outfield assists. Mm -hmm. Only had one last year. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Like – he makes crazy plays. Mm-hmm. He does. He's, he's amazing. He is. Like, his defense has gotten so much better this year. It has, because he's in right field where he feels comfortable, not in center field. Like last yeah. Year. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, think, I also think he likes Citizens Bank Park more than the Nationals' place. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think we all would. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Anything more you want to say about Bryce or not? You you're done with him. You don't talk. Uh, about him. No one pitches to him. Hopefully he can get hot and carry us with Scott Kingery. Yes, oh, yeah. Kingery. Scott Kingery needs to wake up. He's he's really falling off. Uh, hey, I know you're a big the best Scott player fan. in baseball. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, he just needs to get that average higher. He's another guy. He needs to get the average a little bit higher. He'll. He's at like 19 home runs this year. He'll he'll hit 20, but he just needs to, you know, pick it up a little bit with the uh, average. He's it's, it's 261 right now. He needs to get that average a little bit higher. In the um, next five years, he's gonna win an MVP. I hope you're right. He's like the next Dustin Bajoyo, uh, as uh, some scout put it. I totally agree with that. I, he's 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 really special talent. So I think we obviously. Our farm system isn't as good as the Atlanta Braves and some other teams. I think our farm system is pretty good. Um, so I'm really yeah. impressed with um, – we don't, we don't really graph us. I'm impressed with some of the players that we have, like Alec Boehm. He was honored last night, and um, it was it was, it was was cool cool to see that. Matt Klintak was there and everybody else. So, um, Yeah, wait. 
Do you think if we um, miss the playoffs, like in a couple days or whatever, that we bring Bohem up for like the last two weeks? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it. you never would really want to call players up immaturely, prematurely. And I'll tell you why. He's doing so well. I know. I know. It's kind of early to do that because number one, I can kind of get in their head a little bit. Kind of can get in their head a little bit. Number one, he's not ready to play at this level yet. I understand he's a fantastic player. He's going to be, but he's great. But you just don't really want to. You just you don't want to call him up prematurely, and uh, I don't think that'd be the best idea. I know, I know you, it's I early, tell you but I really great. want to watch him play in the bigs. Yeah, I do too. I think next year you're going to be able to see that. So uh, Adam Paisley got caught up so quick too. So we you know we got some young players here that know how to play at a pretty high level at such a, such a young age. I mean, Adam Paisley was only drafted two years ago. He's already up at the show. So it's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Now moving Yo, on. I just thought about this. Mm-hmm. So since I'm wearing a Dom Brown jersey from 2014, I just thought about this. Bryce Harper is like exactly what we wanted Don Brown to be. Yeah, I mean, I remember like Don Brown, like like the twenty thirteen Don Brown, like we all thought he was going to be like the future outfielder, and he just kind of yeah. Just like fell off. remember in twenty fourteen when he in May he had like four, forty home runs in a month. <laughs> yeah, he he was he wasn't that many. He like know? really really fell off after that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's one of our many prospects that kind of got off to a fast start but kind of fell off at the end. Um, so before we wrap up Bryce Harper, I want to give it the final prediction stats. How many home runs do you think he'll end up with? How many RBIs? How many walks? And uh, what the batting average is? So I think his batting, batting average will be around 256. I think his home run total will be 35, 36. I think he'll finish with 112 RBIs. And I think he will finish with 107 walks. And um, Noah, what about you? Before we wrap up this Bryce Harper thing and move on, um, I think I'll get like 34 doubles, mm-hmm. um, 105 RBIs. Maybe I'll get another stolen base. I'll probably get walked like five more times. So that's 100. I think he'll do more than that. I think he'll get to like 110. That's possible. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, but the teams we're playing have a lot of good pitchers. That's that's true. Yeah, but they're not going to be. I think in D.C. I think he's somewhere in D.C., man. I, I can't wait to see that. I love to see Harper go deep in D.C., man. I, I, I'm call, do you think he's going to go deep in D.C. in that five-game series? I think he will. In five games, yes. Yes, I absolutely. I think he might hit, too. I really am hoping. I love to see what crank a homer off. Of, uh, uh, he already did against Strasburg. I want to see it against Scherzer. Yeah. Or Corbin or someone like that, just to stick it to this former team. Um, so, guys, so that's pretty much about the Bryce Harper situation. We're very, very pleased with his performance this year, unlike some other people. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> specifically in D.C. or uh, some Pride Baby Phillies fans. Um, now, our manager, Gabe Kapler. Um, now, last time I talked to you, I think you said that you liked him. Uh, so I think everybody knows how much how I feel about him. So I don't even if you watch this video cast, you know how I feel about Gabe Kapler. So uh, no, I want to ask you what now you think of Gabe Kapler now that you know he's you know what he's done this year. I think it's time to fire him. The words I've been waiting to hear for so long from you. I totally. Agree I mean, some of the. Dumb stuff he's done with the pitchers is insane. I know. Like, even like going back to his first series as a Philly manager. Like, remember that time they put in the bullpen dude without warming up? <laughs> yeah. yeah that was, it was. It. Wasn't it like, uh, <laughs> wasn't it like Dominguez? Um, I, I, I don't think he was up at that time. I think it was somebody else. I forget now. It was the first season. The first series, as you said, the first series of it, he was a manager. He didn't have anybody warming up in the bullpen. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody was even warming up. That was an absolute disgrace. Like, it just shows how inexperienced he is. And I don't know if you saw this, Noah, but he was doing – what manager does push-ups in the middle of the outfield? In the Fenway Park. We're at Fenway Park. He was doing push-ups in the middle of the outfield. Like I in did front see of, that. Yeah, like, just so everybody could see it. Like, it's like he's – 
It's like enough of the razzmatazz is when, when it's baseball games. Like I don't care about what kind of, you know, if you're a surfer dude or whatever, or you're some, I don't care what race, ethnicity, or what you look like. This, if you're going to help us win ball games, come over and help us. Like, like we don't need some fancy manager. Like I really don't. It's ridiculous. Like it's, it's, it's a disgrace. So do you agree? I'm sure you do. Yeah. Can we get like a uh, Dusty Baker or something? Yeah. 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 Or Bruce bring Bochy. Mike Carley. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the we, we from the Royals mm -hmm. or Mike, or Mike. You know what I'm talking about. Or Mike Sosha. I heard rumors about that. Oh, yeah. He might get fired. Or Drew Madden. Yeah, Mike Sosha's already got – he, he, he uh, resigned at, at last year. But John, John – John, I keep saying John Madden. Joe Madden, uh, the Cubs manager, is he, if they don't go anywhere this postseason, I think he's gone. Uh, and I definitely would love to see us pick him up. He's he's a great manager. He's kind of a, kind of a cool guy, and I'd really like to see the Phillies pursue him. Um. So that's how we feel about that. Do you want to say any more about the managing, or do you think that we've touched on that enough? He just doesn't know how to manage a bullpen. No, he doesn't. He's he's terrible. Um, and, I mean, like, I hate analytics, but, like, he uses it too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he uses it way too much. I think Joey Gallo is terrible for baseball. <laughs> he's not hitting for uh, such a low average as he was last year, though. Yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about him. He's completely unrelated. <laughs> That's okay. Terrible player. Um, now, I think we touched on – do you want to say anything more about the management or do you think that we've covered that? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, now, I know another thing that we wanted to talk about, we've covered the, the, the playoff chances, we've covered Harper, we've covered Kapler. Now, there's one – a couple more things we're going to talk about. So, one of them – is something that no one really wants to talk about. And I'll give my opinion first. Is the missed starting pitching up the missed pitcher the pitchers that we missed out on uh, this off season. Actually, you know what? I I'm gonna let you go first. Missed out on. I would say dudes that we didn't try to get. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I know. I know. And the Dallas Keiko situation with Clentech. Do you want to comment on that? Um, should have grabbed him. I know. I know. And it was it was a cheap. All you had to do was just sign him to a one year deal. And the fact that. Klintek didn't even bother to call up Boris. That's a disgrace. You don't even give him a phone call. Well, I before I talk, I before either of us talk, I want to say I love Matt Klintek. I think he's a great GM. But he's a good man, not the best GM. I'm not saying anything. I think oh, he's a good person. I, I, he I, bought I, a uh, Hanfield football discount card for me. Oh, he did. Yeah, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's cool. Um, yeah, he does live local. Um, now where, where were you going to say, where were you going to say about Quintec? I think he's a good GM. Uh, I loved all the moves he made this off season aside from pitching. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Harper, Rio Muto, Segura, like the Segura trade was like amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah. JT Crawford and Carlos Santana for Segura. Yeah, and I know Santana's having a good season, but I don't think he, mean, he didn't. He wasn't. But who knows? He would have had that season with us. He wouldn't have. Yeah, I mean, he's not an he's not a he's not a National League player. He belongs in the American League. I know he's like yeah. a good defensive player, but like he's more of like a DH type of guy. He's not really meant for the National League. He's not a national. There's some players who just don't do well in the National League and do well in the American League. There's some players in the American League who don't who do better in the National League. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Santana's happy to be back in Cleveland and good for him. And then obviously JP Crawford is a joke. So I don't even care about that. Uh, he's, he's a disgrace. So I wasn't happy. I wasn't you know sad to see him leave, but, um, you know, I really remember when we signed Santana, I was so happy that like two years ago, whatever it was, we signed him. I think I remember talking to you about it. Like when it happened. Uh, we yeah, I was with you when it great. happened. Yeah. That's, we all thought that signing was great. It was going to work out and it just didn't. So. That's okay. Sometimes this don't work out, and that one didn't. But now I want to talk. I want you to. We're talking about the pitchers that he uh, didn't even target, like Dallas Keuchel. You don't even call up Scott Boris to even say anything. So, how do you feel about what a disgrace this this whole start with Craig Krimble? We that's all we heard off off season. Like it was terrible. It was like a remaining cycle. Dallas Keuchel, Craig Krimble, where are they gonna go? Harper Machado. So, what do you think about uh, Klintak missing out on those pitching targets? 
<laughs> so, first we should have gotten Patrick Corbin. Mm, Harper, we, we wouldn't have Harper then, I don't think. Yeah, we would. We got like the 13th highest payroll in the league. We did offer him a contract. In Clint Tax defense, we did offer him a pretty good contract. I think we offered I like – I know we did, but – Like five years, like around like the Yankees offer. I know like the Yankees, Phillies, and Nats were – and the Nats were like the, the dark horse in that whole pursuit. Like we, I did not yeah, think yeah. the Nats had a legit shot at getting him. They just totally went in to surprise everybody. That felt so long ago. That was like – that was like a year – like it was almost like a year ago. Oh, my God. That was before the McCutcheon deal. Yeah, it was like – that was like last – like December – it's so long ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we obviously Patrick Corbin any, and any other names you you uh, were, mis- were upset about we missed out on? Uh, Krimble, or mm-hmm. however you say his name. Krimble, yeah. Um, it didn't take that much to get him. Like, no, no, it didn't. And, and I just think he kind of wanted a lot of money. He wanted, like, like what do you want, like a five, four or five-year deal with, like, all this insane amount of AEV yeah. crap. He wanted like a hundred million guaranteed. He's no way. He didn't even get anywhere close to that. I was Dallas Keiko. for a closer. Yeah, da- I think Dallas Keiko wanted around the same money too, and he's old too. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I mean, it, it, yeah, man, the pitching targets we missed out on, and it, so I personally, I think we should have signed at least one of those guys. Uh, obviously, you know, obviously Corbin was really, really expensive, but there's some names coming up this off season. We yeah. could have traded some Trevor Bauer. Possibly, possibly. I'm not a big I Trevor, love Bauer, Trevor guy. Bauer. Not a huge Trevor Bauer fan. Um, don't really like his attitude, but uh, he is a pretty decent pitcher. Now let's talk about uh, the pitching target. To pitching targets, the Phillies should be targeting this offseason. Now we all know that this rotation is a disaster. We obviously know we have Spencer Howard coming up, um, but he he's not going to be able to carry this whole rotation, right? Um, you got Aaron Nola, of course. Now. Look at our pitching right now. You got Jake Arrieta. You got Zach Eflin. Well, Jake Arrieta can't even stay on the field. Nonetheless, he's hurt, and you get paid like $25 million a year just to be hurt all year. So he's terrible. You got Zach Eflin. He's too inconsistent. You got Eikhoff. Like, you got a guy who like, is hurt, and he's not good. So um, you got these other guys like Vinny V. He's not the answer. You got all these other guys out there who are just not good enough, like a, like a Jason Vargas. You may want to pick up on his option, but one thing that if Zach Wheeler, Tanner Rillard, like these guys, and Cole Hamels, they're all going to be free agents. Is that a lot to ask for? I think Gary Coles goes to the Yankees. I think the fan base is going to be furious if he doesn't go there, the Yankee fans. So that's why I think the Phillies have to go out and sign Tanner Rillard, a, a, Tanner Rillard, a you know, a, a, a Zach Wheeler, uh, you know, a Cole, bring that Cole Hamels. Like that, we can make that work. We have like a rotation of no. I'm not going to get this in order. Nola, Roark, Wheeler. It's it's an upgrade over, you know, Eflin's, the Eikhoff's of the world. It's it's better than that. We can make this work. We can make this a good rotation. It's it's a, it would, we make it a solid rotation. And Klentek needs. It, it's not a lot to ask. It's not. I, I mean, I think a lot to ask would be going out and saying you have to go out and sign Garrett Cole. You know, to a massive contract, like that, yeah. I think that'd be a lot to ask for. But I think going out to ask for like a Tanner Roark, a Zach Wheeler, and maybe even sign both of both of these people, stick them in the rotation. Maybe even pick up on Jason Vargas's you know option as well. Like we could make this work. It's we're not in a hopeless situation with the pitching. So no, I want to turn it over with to you, and I want you to share your thoughts. I wonder if you want to share your thoughts on the pitching, Phillies pitching targets and how you think the rotation can build out for the year 2020 looking ahead. Um, so I'm looking at the names right now. Um, Steven Strasburg, we could get him. Is he? Um, opt- yeah, I think he has an opt-out clause. He's he's guaranteed a, a lot of money. Uh, he's not yeah. opt out, but there. I mean, yeah, he's got a player option. I didn't realize yeah, he's, that. He's, until. he's not going to opt out. There's no question. Yeah, no way. Yeah. I mean, but maybe next year. Maybe. I think he's at like forty million, like like later in his career. I'm not. I think it's like forty million. If you look it up on the yeah. internet, I, I think I saw that a little while ago. I think he has back to back opt out years. In his yeah, contract. yeah. He's he's that contract is so player friendly. It's not Rizzo didn't do the best job with that contract. But go ahead. Nah. Yeah. Uh, Hamels will be on the market. Grab him. Uh, Porcello. Eh, not really sold on him. Injin Ryu. From oh the Dodgers, oh Mitch Hill, even though he's forty. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, these are some names that we could pick up on. I Garrett Cole. 
Yeah, that's not that's not going to happen. Massive bump gunner also isn't going to happen either. Too expensive. And I don't think Klintak, Klintak, he tried to go expensive with the pitching in like 17, 18 offseason, like two years ago. And it yeah. completely backfired at Jake Arrieta, like like five year or three year deal, seventy five mil. That was a disaster. I don't think he. I think he's yeah. kind of hesitant to do that again. See, and it wasn't like it wasn't like Arietta outperformed like the first two years. And, you know, you're like, I was thinking like, okay, well the third year is not good, then that's okay. Well, this, you know, it, the 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 first two years that were great can kind of justify the one year being bad. But he had no good years. Last year was terrible, and this year was terrible. So he yeah. can't really justify. Well, the end of last year was good for him. Yeah, yeah, I th- I, yeah. In the beginning of this year, I don't think he was bad either. No, he yeah, wasn't until the elbow thing. Yeah, yeah. He's just too old, and he's—I don't like his attitude, and I don't really like to say like some. You know, it's not a bad word. He's kind of a douche. I mean, like he, the way he trashes, the way he talks about his teammates. It's very. It's just, he's not a good teammate. And like he's like going out there saying, "I tried my best. I tried to do this. I tried to do that." It's like, well, how about you say, like, you're, you're part of the team. Like, you're not just worried about yourself. Like, this this is a family we got here. You know, it's not all about you. So I, I didn't really like, like that message that Arietta was sending. I didn't like the vibe that Arietta was kind of sending to this to his teammates. I thought, I thought that that was a little bit disrespectful. Um, but nevertheless, that's Jake Arietta for you. <laughs> Omar Bailey? Oh, my gosh. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. What is he like Kansas City two now? Two no hitters in like 2012. Yeah, yeah, with Cincinnati. What is he with Kansas City now? He's with Oakland. Oakland? Oh, I thought he was. Yeah, I think he did. I think he was in Kansas City. He, he was in Kansas year. City. Yeah, I guess I didn't know he went there. I think I think I did know that. I just forgot. Yeah, we talked about him on the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now. I think these are the pitching targets that, you know, obviously aside from Homer Bailey, uh, I think that some of these are the pitching targets that uh, the Phillies have, uh, you know, target. Now, uh, this is obviously a joke, but what about Bartolo Colon? <laughs> is he seriously, like, a free agent? <laughs> yeah, he still is, I think. Yeah, he's a, le- he's a legend, man. <laughs> no, like, for next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not, he's not under contract with anybody. He's, free, he's like, been a free agent all year long. Last year, I think he played with – who was it last year? Like Minnesota? Yeah, Minnesota. Last year? I think so. Yeah, I he was I'll just, check baseball reference. Yeah, um, yeah. so obviously we don't want Bartolo Colon in the scene. <laughs> he's way too old and he's not good anymore. I, I, I forget who it was. He wanted to think Minnesota. He was never good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was never he was really good. Minnesota in the end of 2017, Texas last year. Yeah, Texas. That's who it was. Yeah, Texas. Um, now, now I want to talk about this, Noah. Now I want to talk about the two prize free agents that we couldn't stop hearing about. Okay, Bryce Harper and Manny Machado this past seat off season. That's all you heard about. And now um, the question is. Who is having a better season? Now, I think we all know who's having a better season. Bryce Harper, obviously, we already went over his stats. 254, 31 home runs, 102 RBIs, 13 stolen bags. You know, he's already has 95 walks. And, Harper, Harper. Oh, Harper. for sure. And, and and look at this. Machado has 30 homers on the year. And I understand he might be hitting for a little bit. He's hitting 258, which is only four points higher. He has 82 RBIs, which is 20 less than Harper. And he's not nearly drawing as many as walk, not nearly as many walks as Bryce Harper is drawing, and um, yeah, he only has fifty nine walks this year. Fifty nine. Harper has ninety five. He's grounded in the twenty four double plays. Yeah, thirty thirty million dollars a year. This, I mean, Harper has had a much better season than Machado, no question. And people are thinking, well, what wow, the Phillies made a big mistake choosing Harper over Machado. I think the opposite. I think the I think the Phillies made the right decision. And Machado's not having a bad year. I'm not taking that away from him at all. I'm not saying that. But he, Harper is having a better year than Machado. And it's not like Machado's hitting like 300. Harper's Harper's Machado's better. only hitting four points higher than Harper. Harper's a better fielder too. <laughs> yeah, Machado is pretty good at River at uh, third base. But I mean, Tatis and Machado once like next year. That's going to be like really really good. But um. I think. I mean, like, I'm thinking now that he's at shortstop because <clears throat> went up. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. But he's a better third baseman than Harper is in right field, but yeah, yeah. for quite no question. Yeah, but Harper. I mean, they, they, I mean, they both haven't had terrible seasons. But I don't I mean. I think Harper's been ahead of ahead of Machado for sure. Harper's so, got a higher WAR. Yeah. More home runs, more RBIs, more runs, more stolen bases. And look at the walks. Staff. Look at the walks. Ninety-five walks. Machado only has like fifty-nine. Maybe even like less than that. So he's got fifty-nine. Harper, Machado. The on-base percentage isn't even close. Yeah, yeah, it, it isn't, man. It's it's uh, it's clear as day to Harper's obviously having a better season than Machado. We're not just saying that. If it was vice versa, we'd be saying the other, the you know, opposite. If Harper was on the Padres, Machado was here, then we'd be also saying that Harper's having a better year than Machado. Imagine where we would be without Bryce Harper. So I was saying that to. Uh, I actually met Philly's insider at the game the other night. Uh, he's an Instagram guy, Instagram great guy. Go give him a follow. Um, we were actually talking. I was talking to him, um, and uh, I'm like, imagine where we would be without Bryce Harper. Like, we would, like, we'd be, like, like under 500, really. We could well, well be over under 500, even if we had Machado. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Hoskins needs to get his head together in the offseason. Um, yeah, before we wrap it up, I, mean, I, want, I don't want to make this video too long for people already at 31 minutes. So, uh, no, I don't want to make this really, really quick, like a two-minute two, two minute thing. Hoskins need to improve, needs to improve this offseason, work with Charlie Manuel. What do you think Hoskins needs to do differently? Uh, I think he needs to be more accurate with his barrel. I agree. He needs to stop like, pulling everything. His barrel accuracy is terrible. Uh-huh. Yeah, he needs to stop pulling everything. He's very pull. He's too pull happy sometimes. So I think he needs to improve on that. Other than that, I think he's had a very nice season. Um, the Hoskins, um, 27 home runs. But um, compared to what he did last year, last year was better. I mean, he's only hitting 236. The walks have been good. That's why I'm saying that. He's had a nice season. But it's he has the best eye in the bigs. Yeah, he does. he is one of them. Yeah, he's it's not great. It's not anything like a special. He's had a nice season. Not great. Not great. It's above average. 236, 27 home runs. Uh, but in April, he was on top for like 40, 40 plus, dude. Anyway, he's 27. He'd be, be lucky if he even finishes with 30. But JT's about to pass him in home runs. So that's how I hey, feel about that. Do you remember that game where uh, in May 2015, I think, where Cody Ash had like five errors in an inning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do I'm was looking at his baseball reference right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember that. Cody Ash, I remember him. He was. Terrible. Against the Angels. Oh, my God. That was in 14, I guess, because we didn't play the Angels in 15. We played them in 14 here. Yeah, guys. Um, Muto obviously has had a great season. Cannon throwing arm. Fantastic. Fantastic. He won the gold glove for catcher. Career year. JT. Great. Great. He's fantastic. So that's how we feel about JT. Obviously, no, I'm sure is you know, very pleased with JT's performance as he's shaking his head there. He's definitely a big fan of JT. So, guys, that is pretty much it. Noah, thank you so much for coming on, man. I'm hoping, obviously, he's not going to be appearing on the Eagles Hot Stove. No way. Because uh, you may not like this. I hope you don't smash the dislike because of this. But Noah is a Cowboys fan. He's a diehard Cowboys fan. Such a disgrace. Maybe, Noah, Noah you should come on and, like, we, just, we should have an objective discussion about the Eagles versus Cowboys so maybe he will come on and we'll talk about it. You know, a Cowboys fan and Eagles fan talking about the upcoming game. We should do that. Yeah, no question. So he might be coming on. But, yeah, I'm sure you'll be maybe coming on this offseason. So, no, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really enjoyed having you on. And um, we'll obviously do it again in the future, man. Thanks for having me. Peter Ruth wasn't that good. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm serious. <laughs> I can hit 60 home runs at a 290 stadium. <laughs> social media check it out link in the description below please smash the like in this video i will talk to you later i was joined by noah thank you guys talk to you later Bye. see you guys